Well, I am here with Mr. Dennis, and he is an astound historian on Poland and Poland mil military history. So, Dennis, can you tell us a little bit about Poland during World War II? Well, to understand Poland in World War II, you have to realize that it was a really a new reconstituted country. It became a country independent again in 1918, and so it had to establish itself both economically and militarily, and as you can imagine, its resources to do so was limited. So they had an army, air force, and navy, but their capabilities were limited. The army's challenge in 1939 was to confront a, a Wehrmacht that could come at them from three potential directions, uh, north, uh, south and west, mostly from the west, and so they deployed their army in uh, groups along the border, but they were widely separated and not mutually supportive, and of course, technologically, they were inferior to the Wehrmacht at that, that time. Um, they did have things like tanks, uh, uh, fighter aircraft, bombers, and stuff like that, but not uh, in the numbers or the sophistication as did the Germans. And so when the Germans attacked, uh, they were able to penetrate the uh, main line of defense and uh, surround major armies. The Poles tried to withdraw uh, strategically to the east, but uh, 17 days later, they were also attacked by the Soviet Union. And so they were basically overwhelmed. Well, Mr. Dennis, I hear constantly people talking about the Polish cavalry charge on tanks. I know that's a total misrepresentation. Can you talk about that for a moment? Sure, and again, it's uh, important to understand uh, perspective, and that is that the German army, and as did the Soviet army, have cavalry forces. Uh, Polish cavalry were employed for scouting, but also um, the issue of this um, a misunderstanding had to do with the fact that there was a skirmish, I'll call it, between uh, Polish forces and uh, the German forces. And the uh, skirmish uh, happened to occur uh, where there were some uh, carcasses of horses and the uh, Nazi propaganda machine brought in the Western uh, newspaper reporters and characterized the fight as being one with uh, German uh, armor against Polish cavalry. And the uninformed newspaper men didn't have the depth of knowledge to realize that they were being snowballed. Well, that, that's, that's the story I really wanted to get out there. And uh, before we close this out, I've been uh, researching World War II and the Polish army and how valiant they, they fought. Is there anything you'd like to sum up on our video before we close it out? Well, of course, uh, we in the West understand the contribution of the Americans and the British, but it was the Poles who provided the third next largest complement of soldiers, uh, both in the um, Navy, Air Force, and uh, the Army. As a matter of fact, one of the major battles that uh, the Poles fought uh, very valiantly and successfully was in the battle that closed the Falle Gap. They were one of the pincers. The first Polish armor division was the northern pincer that connected up with the Americans and surrounded the German uh, uh, army there. And that would be the D-Day invasion, correct? Yes, it was after, after D-Day. The other thing, too, that you should uh, wear, many of the Poles wanted to stay in the West because they knew that the Soviet Union was going to be taking over Poland, but they were denied uh, the ability to remain in the West, and they were forced to go back to Poland and uh, suffer the consequences of being under Soviet rule. Well, Dennis, thank you for this interview. Um, your knowledge of Polish history is phenomenal, and I, I just had to get an interview from you to uh, let our viewers know how valiant the Polish army fought in World War II. I appreciate you doing that. Thank you.